with Mitch Trubisky, I can at least walk through and be like, at least we went for the guy that we wanted. That's fine. Mitch is a quarterback that we never wanted. You know, you saw... You guys before the show, a lot of people like this one as well. That's the one! That's the one! <laughs> Same this guy... Up. John, you my man! You my man! I love this one! This one's a keeper. I don't care about anybody else. I can remove my team. That's a keeper. Did you like go this ahead, one, John. Scott? <laughs> I'm go if he brought if Mitch, if my sister brought him home, I'd be terrified. <laughs> <laughs> but he but seems like, so sweet at the same time. Oh, he time, does. With his glasses, with his glasses, I get yeah. it. <laughs> also, voices from everywhere. And I always talk about this uh, for the fan, by the fans, for the fans. You know what I'm saying? And so you guys have a unique way of being able to do what you guys do. And I just want to tell you guys, thank you so much. Because I see you. If I see you, that means you guys are out there, and that's always good. Kenny Young, as long as you're not going to be a Green Bay Packer, I'll have to put that out there. I'll have to put that out there. You can go anywhere else. Hey, as long hey. as you don't go to Green Bay, we're okay. I know, I know, right? No, I appreciate you guys having me and the support, man. Honestly, like, I think... We're on this. <laughs> guys, try and remain professional and compose yourself with your good sake. <laughs> This uh, this whole show is getting deleted, guys. Just so you, you know, know, it's not. It's, ne- <laughs> it's never going to be on. Welcome back to the Irish Bear Show. We have everybody here today, and this is a, a bit of a different show. Like Tony said at the end of that clip, this one will not be too This will not be there. Trying to I guess, with you guys, the absolutely amazing news. This is just us having a, a bit of a laugh, talking about... I guess the latest stuff that's going on in terms of the Chicago Bears. How are we all doing? Grand. How are you? All good. Doing good. I'm in a shed. <laughs> <laughs> are you in a shed against your will or like? No, no. I've, I've got. I've, I finally put something up though. I, I, I look at Noel's every time I watch do a show. I look at Noel's perfectly done up framed one. So I said, "Fucking, I put one behind me there." So. At least I feel that I'm uh, that I'm sorted. I'm also blinking twice, so I'm okay. No puts hey, hey. no puts those pictures up just for the show though. He takes every single one of them down and puts them in the cupboard at the end of the show. <laughs> sure. now, he takes them down and he puts up like 49er ones instead. So he <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nonsense. How, how did that? How did that? Uh, how did that Premier League last week go for you? There, no, it was all right. Sorry, Tony, I can't hear you. You're breaking up. <laughs> Are you taking a piss? Of course, he's taking the. Of course, he's taking the piss. No. But look, I do want to. We'll start off here. I don't remember the answer right away. You don't remember? Yeah, <laughs> I literally don't remember. I have Fair to read enough. the text to see who I was talking to. Mm-hmm. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Look, the one thing I'll I'll say is we're gonna we're gonna do more of these shows to where literally we'll talk about whatever topics are going on in in sports in Chicago Bears, where we get to have the kind of unfiltered Bears talk, like you guys see in about a bunch of our shows. We get guests on, we get to ask certain questions, we try and get your comments in. This is kind of a free for all where. If somebody wants to rant about something, they can do that. But we decided we are going to do one of these shows today because we had that little bit of news at the end of last week that uh, we are all going to be coming to Chicago in October to see the Bears against, and I hate this name and so many times, and we might even start with this. It's the Washington Commanders. Like before (laughs) Before we start and talk about the trip and before we kind of let people know what we're going to be doing, like... I've said this to a couple of people every single time I have to talk about Washington. I'm like, I just can't get over how stupid a name the commanders are. It, it, do you know what it reminds me of? If any of you guys play, played Madden maybe like four or five, six years ago, and you could create your own team and I had all the, the names that <laughs> you had to pick from, it was like something like uh, Tiburon, and then it, had, it definitely <laughs> had the commanders. And I'm like, my God, it's probably the worst name in the NFL. I digress. Oh. Look, to be fair, Agent Mel makes a good point. 
such a bad name, but so much better than the Washington Racist. So yeah. But can I can I just say that when it was the WFT, and I just would read it as "What the fuck," and I I yeah. always think of them as the "What the fuck" team. Yeah, very <laughs> accurate. I, though. Like, like it's fitting. You can go on for years though. Right. Quarter. Exactly. <laughs> so they will forever to me be the "What the fuck" team. So that's all. I the like I like the football there. team. <laughs> yeah. Just it was like it was very unique football. and it was just on the nose. Like, what are they? They're the Washington football team. That's what they get. That's who they are. So yes. it's, it's like a hard, a hard thing left after. Yeah, it was like, yeah, we are guys from Washington who play football. You know, <laughs> but you look you look at like the Packers. As a we are men from Wisconsin who do things with boxes. Do you know what I mean? Like at least <laughs> at least Washington had some sort of direction and description mm -hmm. to, to, to their game. You know, don't like, no, I just don't know what well, they're doing. Well, well you know what's going to happen, right? It's going to be very similar. I'm sorry for anybody that doesn't follow, like, football that we have over here in terms of soccer, but it's going to be like the Kylian Mbappe thing, right? Where he's just been given pretty much free reign for PSG. That's what's going to happen with Aaron Rodgers. He's going to sign some contract to where they can rename the team the Green Bay Rodgers or something like that, or the Green Bay Karens <laughs> for, for Anthony's sake. Well, like, it, you know, something like that, he's going to try and – pull something like that but like it's just i find that name just so ridiculous i and i tried to think of the other day is there any other sports teams that have like maybe a more basic or stupider name and i couldn't come up with one okay like, so i actually have one but it was only for like a two-day period that mark so marquette used to be the warriors back in the day and they changed it for the similar reasons that the washington redskins changed their names and then they changed it to the golden eagles which they are now but for like two days there was like this uproar and they decided to change it to the marquette gold and just the in every like ncaa everybody in the big east just made so much fun of marquette for being the gold because they're like, is it just going to be like these little gold bars as, as the, the, you know, mascot? And nobody Color knew. Color <laughs> Yeah. And it was really embarrassing. And um, so I would, I'll have to put in the market gold for that. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of, uh, what was it, maybe a year or two ago. And I guess this kind of go, does go in with Washington where, I think everything is becoming very PC now. Like I understand why they wanted to change Washington, but then I, I saw them trying to say, "Oh well, Notre Dame shouldn't be the Fighting Irish." I'm like, Irish people don't give a shit. We really don't. Let them keep their nickname. Like they've, it's been <laughs> there all leprechaun. the time. Dancing leprechaun, top of the morning to you. They can do all that shit. That, I have no problem with that whatsoever. Do you draw the line at Lucky Charms, though? Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> Yes, I do. Anyone that's been over there, especially when I'm when you're my height and five foot three, and referred to as a leprechaun and dance, dance, lucky charm, dance, which was told to me when I was in New York. One time, <laughs> is, uh, this is uh, more than entertaining that you can imagine. Me and Foxy's lucky fucking charms wouldn't be our best mates. I really hope that happens when we're in Chicago. By the way, I oh, want to be there yeah. to see. That. Uh, to be fair, that's going to be me. We're going to be in like. The middle of the game, and like Daz Newsom's gonna get a touchdown, and I'm gonna be like, Dance monkey, dance. <laughs> okay, okay, I can tell you this I will try and get on the field if Daz Newsom goes a touchdown and I'm in the stadium. I'm saying no, that you, to know you, where, you know where we're sitting at. Miles <laughs> <laughs> you can play either thing. Next week, get on the field next week. The game will be, yeah. be finished. <laughs> bring, oh. bring your bungee rope with you. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's it's gonna be it's it's exciting to get to go to actually be able to go to a game and everybody going to be there like that's the that's the main thing it's it's just gonna be and getting to be there for a couple of days because look for anybody that doesn't know each one of us obviously Corey and Adam are, are in Chicago at the moment but terrible commute yeah terrible <laughs> absolutely awful but uh, you guys are so hard done by. Just yeah. such, such an inconvenience. <laughs> yeah. So myself, Tony, and and Noel are um, planning on going to Chicago in Thursday. And this kind of came about from, I would say, Tony and Anthony. Basically, I know Ant, you're you're going to be in Chicago anyway that week. Um, and Tony, you were planning on it as well. And then we just kind of came up with the idea that if it's feasible that we all just go. And it literally came out really quickly. Like Tony, I think you put in that. Oh, uh, you booked your flights, and then 
I think it was for me, it was like maybe like midnight and like, fuck it, I'll do it. <laughs> and and then from there, I think everybody just did it. And yeah, so we're going to be there for a couple of days. So it'll be fun. Yeah. We'll, we'll try plan a, a bunch of stuff. I can't even stay up with whatever we've we planned. All I know is we're going to the game. But look, Tony, I'll, I'll let you talk about it a little bit because I know you... I think you were the first one, maybe yourself or Anthony were the first one to kind of book it and kind of get get this ball rolling, which I think is it's fun to be able to talk to a lot of people. And yeah, um, it's t- taking the plunge. Peace, uh, the Irish ass. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you will see. You will see me. Is our tagline to the game? Yeah. If you if you see, if you go to the game, you see I'm going to be one of those people. That you know when they put it on like the jumbo trance or like down a beer, that's definitely gonna be me. <laughs> do, do they do a kiss cam? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying beside you. <laughs> no, but oh god, I've scared Corey away. I'm sorry, Corey, I take it back. <laughs> she doesn't want to sit beside you either. So no. Corey's got to check the seat numbers on the ticket. She knows who she's not sitting <laughs> next to, yeah. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, the uh, I so booking it was was uh, nerve wracking because you're booking the tickets to, f- to actually get there, and then you're like, we haven't actually got a gate a ticket for the game yet, and then but obviously there's still shit tons of tickets left, but you just got this thing in your head like I'm going to book a flight, and then I'm going to try and book a a, a, a game ticket. It's not going to be there, so it's just going to be me in a pub in Chicago as opposed to me in a pub in Glasgow watching the game kind of thing, do you know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, no, I'm excited. It's, it's my first trip to Chicago as well, so um, I'm I'm super excited to, to get have, over. Don't you, have, and... don't you have family there? Tell I do, me. yeah, I do. So, but I've, I've, you've just I've never, never seen them. <laughs> oh, yeah, just not, not, in, like not, not in Chicago. <laughs> Tony's like, the, he's going on long last family. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, they're, like, they're like my dad. They're like my dad's cousins. So um, I, uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna turn up at their house if they're around. I don't think they are around actually, but. Um... <laughs> <laughs> One time you turn up. Tony, oh, it's weird that you picked that week. We're actually going to Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, this one, this one's pretty much. Uh, it's Tony with the guy that all it's in the family. Yeah, I have much. a family all over the place, man. That Tony, I'm telling you. Tony, do you have do you have a half brother in the island of Seychelles? Quite possibly. <laughs> I, I I don't know what my dad's got up to. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> this but, is yeah. a da- this is a dangerous comment. I'm just going to put oh. that out there. You're talking about you're talking to Irish people here. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. Is that legally binding? Is that like a so that's a that's actually now? the guy that's that's actually the guy that offered up his basement bar uh, for a show if we can't find anywhere to do a live show. So oh, he's, he's he's putting I'm, his money where his mouth is with that comment right there. Yeah, I right did not there. understand oh, that comment on Twitter, so that makes a whole lot more sense now. Okay, awesome. Yeah, because I'm just going to tell you this: Irish people go to weddings, and we like destroy the entire alcohol content that was supposed to be there and then there's like this flurry from all the staff trying to find more alcohol which off license is still open to get more in here so that's a very dangerous uh comment yeah six beers on tap you might need to like make that 12 but yeah <laughs> it's a yeah oh this is this is a good one here as well from agent mo Tony has 47 half brothers around the world, and they all look exactly like Tony, just with an <laughs> ethnic flair on it. <laughs> very, very, very good. I don't very know good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but look, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. I guess with that, um, and I'll bring this obviously to to Noah or Anthony. When's the last time you guys have been in Chicago, or if you have been in Chicago? Go on, no. never for me. No. No, I, I, I've, only, I've only seen the Bears live four times. Once in Dublin against the Steelers years ago. Twice in London. And I've seen them in New York against the Jets. Never been to Chicago. Really? 
Mm. Uh, that's, yeah. go, that's going to be a fun time. Can't wait. Can't wait. <laughs> no, no, you and I are popping our cherry together. That'll be fun. That is oh, I'm joined. That <laughs> first first with the kissing, now popping the cherry. Where are we going in this thing? <laughs> this, this is all really off the rails. That's disgraceful. <laughs> uh, literally, uh, Tony, that, you, your half brothers. <laughs> Your half brothers in Mexico, France, and India, uh, India are disgusted in you right now as they're watching the show. <laughs> uh, yeah, first time for me in Chicago as well, actually. Um, being oh, pretty much in every other city a over. Three wee and, cherry pop there. <laughs> wow, wow, this is going to get out of hand. We got eighteen written on the top of this. Um, oh, right. yeah, so, so look, at, I'm looking forward to it as well. It's, it's, um, it's going to be pretty impressive. Uh, we've got to do a live show over there, so. We gotta, as, yeah, we as, Tony, to as, as Tony rightly said, we've got to see if there's a lot of uh, interesting humans coming to watch us as well. So that would be, that would be fun <laughs> as well. Get as many people there as we can. Be good for yeah, we'll, ha- well, we'll have to figure that out. Like, yeah, it's, that'll be that'll be a good time. We'll we'll try and uh, organize to have some sort of, even if it's not for the day that we do the live show, because we will do a podcast while we're there. It's, Sorry, it's can I just just, just just a quick one, Karen? We do know what's a bar, yes, because like. Look at that, his basement. Well, he heard you like sheds, so he's offering us a basement. He wanted to upgrade your, your living quarters. <laughs> we're going quarters. up the level. We're, we're increasing. It is, it's a really cool basement, so. He's yeah, not just that, talking out of the side of his mouth. So, I'll tell you so, that much. But so he's, I don't he's know if he does like, in the basement. He's, no, he's, not like, he's not like Joseph Fritzl's half-brother, right? Ooh. Like, as long as... Oh, come as long on, you Just saying. What? Popping cherries are and that's so terrible. You can't say that, but you can. Well, well, well here, well Jesus. here, we we are being offered to stay in a basement to drink. So you have to put that out there. <laughs> you do, you do. But look, it's, it's... better than my shed. <laughs> are you now? Are you sure you're actually able to like leave the shed, Anthony? Because for all we know, you're wearing the same <laughs> stuff the last time we spoke to you about like six or seven days ago. So like, are you are you sure you've actually left that place? Yes. Yeah, I'm allowed to leave the shed. Yeah. 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 I am. Yeah. Okay. Just checking. Is there somebody? Is there somebody banging on there telling you what no, to say? No, no. 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 Not at all. No. No. He's suffering from Stockholm syndrome now. Hey! hey boom. <laughs> oh god! Are we oh, going to talk about you. anything in particular? No. Yes, we we will we will we will look for. Oh. I guess for. Oh yeah, I know Tony. But I guess that would make it even more interesting the fact that you guys haven't been there before. I've been lucky enough to, like I said, having family from Chicago that I would. That's why COVID was so weird, right? Because normally I would head over there probably like two or three times a year, get to see them, maybe for a long stretch in the summer, if I'm lucky enough in the winter. So it's good to get back over there. But again, it'll be good to kind of talk to some of the guys that listen to the show, some of the people that we've had on the show as well, we'll be hanging out with them and we'll try and organize something official. Um, Like I said, whatever we do, um we will kind of let you guys know and it's gonna it'll be a fun time and that's that's really the plan for it and look we will let people know where we'll be going on particular days if even where we may kind of tailgate before as well that'll be a lot of fun just hanging out with people before the game because uh yeah it's gonna be fun that's why i think tony you nearly made the mistake of uh booking your flight to chicago on the thursday and I'm like, you can't do that. <laughs> the the jet lag is gonna kill you before you hit the game. You have to give yourself at least a day. So we will be there you know, from Wednesday. You know what's even more like, terrible than that is I almost I almost booked stuff for September as opposed to October. Because I'm going, you're welcome. I'm going, you're welcome. I'm going, I told you you were doing it wrong. <laughs> I'm going to New York in September, so I keep having things in my head like New York, September, Chicago, October, and I'm getting them mixed up constantly. So, yeah, I almost booked flights to Chicago in September at the same time as I'm meant to be on a flight to New York in September. So that would have been very confusing. But uh, but thankfully, I got it right. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I guess, too, for yourself, Corey and Adam, we're talking about kind of going over. When's the last time you guys have actually gotten to go to a Bears game? I went to a. I went to the. I went up to a preseason game last year. I went to the um, Bears Bills game. 
which was just Mitchie a heart to the dagger back. watching Drew Bisky march down the field. That's when you knew we were going to suck. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I was like, okay, so they actually were able to make Trubisky look like a decent quarterback, and our defense just completely imploded. So, yeah, that wasn't the most fun game, although it, it was kind of fun when Fields took the field and the whole stadium just absolutely erupted, and it was during um, Aaron Water Show, so we, we got buzzed like three or four times by different planes. So it was really fun for reasons other than watching the bears. <laughs> I always remember for uh, the air and water show when it was always the way, like there was, cause I would normally go to Chicago in like July and then stay, I'd be there for like maybe six weeks or so. And it was always around that time that I was about to go home. And it, whoever used to say it, I, I never quite got what it was because I'm like, because they said it so quick. And then when I actually saw it written down, I'm like, oh, air and water. <laughs> I know some dude's name. That was air and water. Like, oh, yeah. I thought, it, I thought it was like some show or something. Um, I was like, Air and water, and I'll be here all night. First thought you were talking about someone called Aaron. As I, they were talking about. Like, <laughs> but he puts on a great show, by the way, this Aaron. <laughs> You're welcome, Tony. I just provided clarity for you there. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, look, it's uh, yeah, it, it's going to be a lot of fun to be able to go there again, talk bears, and just hang out. And again, we've done this for so much, and like none of us have actually met each other in person yet. So we're going from none of us meet to us all just meeting in one go. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, could, be the end, could be the end of the Irish Bear show. It could be. <laughs> like, what if we, we hate each other? <laughs> we could come back, absolutely hate each other, and you might just see like six completely new people. I just like be like, <laughs> you fucking take it over. I'm done with this. <laughs> I'll just do spin off shows. <laughs> yeah, we'll what get back it? together in 25 years and we're really old and like, <laughs> oh, like a Led Zeppelin reunion, except like no one will be dead, hopefully. So, yeah. well, okay, so we've gone, so we've gone from kissing <laughs> all the way from us being dead. All right, so we've gone full circle now, Tony. Life, man, it's life. Get yeah. used to it. <laughs> it is indeed. It is indeed. But yeah, no, it's it's going to be a go a good time. But look, I think we will organize the show a little bit so we have something to talk about. And so people can kind of, I guess, learn a little bit of stuff that we wanted to go and talk about. Yeah, look, like Matt says, so Aaron Watershow, famous Chicago, and absolutely, I, <laughs> I, I, I agree. Um, maybe this is a German bear show. We can pivot to things that work out. Yeah, maybe there, maybe there is, or maybe there'll be a Swedish bear show, and Anthony can start That's, that himself. He's been laying the groundwork over here, yeah. Pretty much. But look, the first topic I wanted to go to today, and I guess just we've touched on it over the last few podcasts, but I don't think we've really gotten a chance to delve deep into into it. And it actually comes with, I don't know if you guys saw that they did another one of those episodes for, I think, was it the 1920 Bears? Um, kind of figuring out how Ryan Poles um reconstructed the roster i don't know if you guys kind of saw but i guess everything kind of keeps coming back to the justin fields conversation and the reaction to the off season so with that in mind basically what they were doing in case any of you guys haven't seen it yet was they were going through the different steps of the off season and how they brought in certain players so i thought this would be a good idea to kind of talk a little bit about and just see kind of what are some personal beliefs because we talk about it on the show all the time we ask people about it but i think it's important that we can i guess just go through now that we've gotten to the point of where nine man is kind of done they're starting their workouts at this point in time unless there's like some big i guess cut or release then you're probably not going to see too many changes so look adam i'm going to start with you when it comes to the off season moves the i guess the strategy from ryan poles over the last time what is what's kind of your opinion of this did you i guess one of the questions as well have you seen the episode that the bears put out today i haven't seen what they put out today but 
I mean, I'm I'm in favor of what they're doing, and obviously, it's it's not the sexy thing what they're doing, and I think that's what a lot of people were hoping for. You know, new regime, they're they've got a quarterback like that's it's going to just be all uphill from there. But I mean, we had to eat a little bit to to kind of get out of that hole, and unfortunately, you know, they're they're limited in what they can do. But I think what he's done is smart, and I think I said it a long time ago in a in our group chat. It's it's not just that he's adding depth, he's adding what could potentially be quality depth because everybody kind of has that something that they've done at one point or another. And, you know, that's that's big. You're not just bringing in guys because they have the link or because they've done whatever. Like you, they have tangible proof that, you know, in, in the right circumstances, these people have, have succeeded. So, yeah, you're rolling the dice on most of the people you've brought in, but you're giving yourself a chance. And I think that's really what it is, is, you know, it. The, the, the most understated sentiment of the entire offseason is that Ryan Poles really did get an unfortunate situation and there wasn't much he could do from the get go to make it happen. I mean, you look at t- people wanting you to spend like Jacksonville spent, they're going to they're already at what negative 18 million cap space next year. So, yes. you know, long term flexibility, you're leaving it there because you don't know what you have. And it doesn't make sense to tie up that that th- those uh, financial dollars and things when you're not really sure what you have in front of you. So. You know, it really, it does suck to kind of have to accept that wait and see approach. But as long as you see progress and things happening as it's going, then it's it's not that bad of an approach. And as long as there continues to be that transparency, I think that's the biggest thing. I'm okay with it as long as they keep telling me that what I'm seeing is what I'm seeing. And, you know, they're not peeing on my leg and telling me it's raining. There, there's a, I had to throw one in there for you, but... Um, <laughs> You know, it's it's I'm, I'm OK with it right now because it's been what they've said it's going to be. And that's all you can really ask for after a handful of years of, you know, this you're seeing it. But that's not what it is like. All right. We're we're grown ups. We can tell what we're seeing. We know what we're doing. So, you know, I, I I don't love it, but I get it. And I'm fine with it because they're doing it right. So so far, so good. I have nothing to complain about. Yeah. Look, Mel, I'll come to you next, because like we've spoken with this over time and we've always said throughout the offseason that where you can give a better analysis of it is when they put together a roster and look right now they're at the 90 man right and we've seen what they've done while it may not be the big names like it kind of encapsulates what Iberflus has come in he's always said that he wants that competitive edge on this team and what we've seen is there's very few players that are guaranteed a future on this team like anybody that's been brought in, you've seen them being brought in for maybe one, two years. And that's really it. And it's one where if you don't fight for your job, you just won't play. And it's something we always complained about with Matt Nagy that it seemed like he had his favorites and they would always play. And it wasn't a meritocracy. And when you create kind of a roster in terms of where there are a few, only a few players that you can be rest assured that in three, four, five years time, they're still going to be on this team. So what's been your opinion about all of that? Yeah, similar to Adam, look, I, I like the way things are going. Obviously, they had a certain setup when they came in. They were put into a, into a bad hole when they took over this team, and they had two options. We were close last year, you know, give or take the odd play. Maybe we could have won seven, eight, nine games. So when they came in, they could have said, look, there's potential there to win nine or ten games. Let's throw money at it. And we'll we'll try and do that. But the problem with that is this time next year, then you're going to have to break it all down. Or at most the year after, you're going to have to break it down. So what's the point? You maybe you squeeze out two or three more wins only to be at, at this situation down the road with a worse cap space. So for me, they picked the right option. They went in there and they're building up from the bottom. As you say, they're, they're, they're bringing players in on short-term contracts like these guys have a chance to get in there and solidify themselves with the Chicago Bears. And if they don't, we're not tied to them. And and they're they're building a foundation and they're getting a structure in place. And for me, looking in, it looks like they have a plan. Now, I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if it's going to tank. All I know is at the moment, I as a fan looking at it, I'm I'm really happy with what they're doing because they look like they're making the right decisions. They look like they're 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 trying to build the team that they see and they're, they're trying to mold that up and look that's it people talk about the jags i mean jesus christ who really wants to do what they've done this off season well and i, I guess mind, that... i wouldn't mind they didn't even sign any really amazing players for the money you just know what i mean it's not even like they went out and they got a a, a top class number one wide receiver for that kind of money they, they didn't what what do people want like it's 
give it a year or two and let them build this team up and look, who knows where it goes, but I guess that here com- I guess that comes to my question. Look, I know where I know where you stand on and know probably on, on Tony's case as well, but would anybody have wanted to see the Bears? Let's say if they did have the cap space this year, do what Jacksonville did. Maybe not the same players, but go out and spend this year. Go out and try and focus on the offense in in the draft orders. Everybody down for this kind of, I guess, patient approach, knowing that you can't fix everything in one year. Because that's one thing that Ryan Poles did say in the video today. He mentioned that you can't fix everything this year and that it's step by step and trying to get players in that make the Chicago Bears better. And it's not with the intention of just feeling like you can fix all the bad fortune that the, this Bears team has had in one off season. Does anybody yeah, have any but, opinions on that? Yeah, because there was so much broken. So it, it wasn't like... It, we were a couple of players away or get rid of our head coach and we'd be of a superstar team. We had so many broken parts last year. And over the last two years, I, I listened to one of the podcasts and they made a really interesting point is, is the year that we really went close. Was that a kind of, a kind of fake year? I think it might've been the under center podcast. Was under center podcast actually said it. Was that the fake year that we all got sucked in by, Oh my God, this is who Nagy is. When in reality, we saw Nagy for the next two or three years. And then worst part of all is that, performance where we got to the double doink we're blaming that resulted in Brian Pace pumping loads of money down the down on, on players to try and get us those one two players over the top and it's resulted in where we are now and and that's just reality of American football you you take a chance you take a risk and it doesn't work and that's why he's no longer a GM this is the right strategy to do I also think people are massively underestimating the quality of players we brought in I think people's Attitudes toward these players that they're bums. They're not bums. Like they, they just aren't. We've got a decent looking football team. Are we in a situation where we're going to win a Super Bowl? Of course, we're not in that situation yet. But what we have got is got an opportunity for players to prove that they want to be on this football team. And I, I, I like what they're doing. I agree with Nolan Adam. I, I like the strategy that he's doing. I also like the fact that he's open and honest about it. And it's very much like this is what we're going to do rather than, oh, yes, we are. Justin Fields is a superstar. He's going to bring us to the Super Bowl. Let's get ready to party, Chicago. It, it it's it's very much as I've, I've this is me, my mantra all the time. The adults are back in the room, and it's not just the adults in the GM seat and the head coach seat. All the coaches seem to be very, very much on the same path. Yeah, I, I guess I want to kind of piggyback back onto what you were saying there, Anthony, in terms of 2018, because that's what everybody goes back to and what we've said on this show before that we don't want to see a fake rebuild to where you get one good year, then suddenly you're bad for another four or five. Cause that's what keeps happening that you get one really good season, maybe once every like seven or eight years. And then suddenly you're back to being third or fourth in the NFC North. And with that, I just want to, I guess, get people's opinion on it. Cause when you actually look back at that season, even though the Bears won whatever it was, 12 and 13 games, it actually wasn't that impressive. And the reason why I say that is, has anybody actually gone back and watched the games and seen how close the majority of them were? Like, I think everybody... The second half of the season, that offense wasn't wasn't what it was earlier on. And it was... but, you, but you say earlier on, though, right? So... Like just to, well, just Tampa. To, yeah, that's it. It was the but we have to remember that Tampa, we'll always have Tampa. was was <laughs> terrible, right? So like you start off and lose to the Packers, you beat Seattle by seven, you beat Arizona by two, then it was the Tampa game, which I think that like heightened everything. But then you lose to the Dolphins, you lose to the Patriots, and then the two teams that you beat kind of comfortably in the season or three were the Jets, Bills, and Lions, who were three of the worst teams in, in the league that year. So, like, that's where – but that's – to kind of make that go back to this year, that's where I feel like people, when they say the Bears are going to win, like, two or three football games, where I don't understand it because there's teams like that on the Bears' schedule this year where while the Bears aren't very good, there's still other teams that you look at it and – you could easily see the Bears winning some of those some of those football games. And that's where I just don't get the 
complete negativity, right? I completely get if you want to be, if you want to analyze this and be kind of realistic about it, the Bears probably aren't going to win too many football games. They're not going to get close to kind of making the playoffs like they did two years ago where they sneaked in. They're more, they're probably closer to the other side of it, but it's one of those where I feel like you're kind of caught in the middle, right? You, the overly positive Bears fans are like, this team's going to win 10, 11, 12 games when that's definitely not going to happen. And then there's the other that are like, they're going to win two games. When we always say in the show, the answer is usually in the middle. Um, but yeah, like it's it's going to be interesting. And look, I guess to go back to, to it, and if anybody else had a point on this, would you like to have seen Ryan Poles go with a different strategy to this offseason? Or do you think this is kind of the right approach? knowing the context of this Bears team? Knowing the context of, of this team, what he's doing is the right thing. <clears throat> the problem is that we don't, we don't have enough quality players on the team. So um, the only way to really build quality players is to do that to the draft. So what he did in terms of trading back in day three of the draft, picking up, you know, turning three picks into eight picks or whatever it was, um, was, was key. You know, because again, you, you're going to you're going to pick up, um, you know, ho- hopefully pick up potential uh, diamonds in the rough later on in the draft. Whereas your alternative is to go out there and overpay for someone that another team doesn't want because they weren't good enough, or another team doesn't want because they've got some sort of issue, or another team doesn't want because they've got an injury bug history, or you know, some, something along the lines of that. You know, there's a reason why these guys are available in free agency now. There's no doubt you can definitely pick up some great players in the free agency, but they're usually maybe one or two guys right at the top that's going to cost you an arm and a leg. And again, only if you're at a point where you just need that one or two guys to push you over the line do you go out there and make that move. So if you want to build a, a long-term, sustainable, successful franchise, you need to do that from the bottom up, and that starts in the draft. It starts with uh, taking um, gambles on... Uh, guys later on in the draft this this particular draft was great because it was so deep you know so we took advantage of trading back picking up those extra picks and getting um all those extra players and w- one of the key things for me in this uh the, the draft this year was you know the depth that, that you built especially on the offensive line creating competition that wasn't there before just very quickly we were talking people were talking about the jalen johnson thing earlier on and how he's practicing with the twos now, we don't know why he's practicing with the twos. It may be because he missed, um, you know, voluntary practices. It could be because of whatever. But either way, no one on this team should be guaranteed a place anyway. Everyone should be fighting for positions. And if that means you go, you say, guy, well, you think you're the number one cornerback. Well, have a, have a wee stint down there because I think I can get more out of you than, than you're actually given to us at the minute. Why not do it? The guy's only a second-year player. It's not as if he's a Hall of Famer. So... Um, you know, start from scratch. Everyone's got a clean slate and see how this thing goes. Outside of Justin Fields, there's no no one who should be, uh, you know, a, a, a sure fire. This is your job in May. You know, like, that's, that's so long to go until the season starts. You need to build that competition. You need to get them fighting for places and bring out the best of them. And that's what good coaches do. Um, so, yeah, I think I like Ryan Pohl's approach, but I also like Matt Uberfuss' uh, approach, if that's what it's going to be. Yeah, it's an interesting one because that was my first thought, right? That, like, if he's proving a point that, okay, it's voluntary, but if you're not here, you don't play. And it's it's something that I like in terms of I want to see them change the culture here to where it is a team-first approach. That unless you have some extenuating circumstance, even though it's voluntary, you're expected to be there. And if that's the case and he's making Jalen play on the second team to kind of earn his stripes up there. I'm all for it because, again, you want to promote that culture that if you're not going to put in the work, then you don't play. And it's not so much that Jalen Johnson's not putting in the work, right? But it means that if something like that happens during the season, like we all talked about Eddie Jackson the whole time, like if he has a, a bad game where it isn't kind of – working hard enough that this coaching staff's not going to be afraid to bench you and play somebody else. And I think that's where this sets a good precedent that either you put in the work that's expected of you and you're here 
for every single meeting, every single opportunity to impress a new coaching staff that nothing is handed to you. I think that's really good. And especially with a bunch of rookies coming in, you have 11 rookies plus the UDFAs plus a couple of the tryout guys that got signed. You want to, you want to basically set down the line that you have to work your ass off to get into this team. And if you don't do that, it doesn't matter if you're getting paid $30 million, if you're a second round draft pick, or if you're a UDFA, the guys that put in the work, the guys that perform are going to be the guys that will play. I don't know about you, but that was my first opinion when I saw that on Twitter yesterday, that Jalen Johnson was practicing with the twos. And when I saw people say that he wasn't at the voluntary camp, I'm like, good on Matt Eberflus for doing that. Well, he didn't have to be there because it's voluntary. This is a new coaching staff. Everyone should be there. Like when I see Robert Quinn's not there, I don't care what's going on. It's like, it's still part of your job. We've all been on jobs where you're like, you don't have to go to something, but even though technically you don't have to go, you have to go. Like that's where I see this is, this is that case where it might be something that is voluntary, but at the end of the day, when you know there's new people in, nobody's safe. It doesn't matter. You were picked by the last regime. They have no affiliation to you. Their affiliation now is the Kyler Gordon and Jaquan Brisker. They don't, they don't have to give a crap about you. And to be honest, I think Matt Eberflus for me and all that, whoever wants to take over from here, I think he's doing a bit of a hardball with Jalen Johnson. Because if you listen to him last week, he was praising Kyler Gordon for everything. And yet he was actually, he was, while he put in a couple of compliments for Jalen Johnson, he was also critiquing his game and saying what he was not doing right. And I think that's, it might be him just trying to push him to be a better version of himself. And I don't know what you guys think on that. Just well, on the, the Jalen Johnson. Ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to say, I don't know if you remember last year toward the end of the Nagy experience, uh, Jalen Johnson came out a few, a few times. He had a few things to say. Now I know we were all saying, oh, good on him. We don't like Nagy. But if you're, say, Iberflu, so you're looking at a young player who likes to come out and say things about the coach or about how things are going. So I think he had two or three tweets and he had a, an interview or two where he was kind of putting his opinion across where you probably wouldn't expect a, a young player to be to be doing that, even if people don't like the head coach and the regime that's there. So I don't know if maybe he just thinks, you know, everything you said, Kieran, about not coming to, to voluntary camp, because you would expect, especially a young player, to come and meet the new coaches you know, new teammates, new new head coach, new GM. But maybe maybe Johnson himself, they just feel, has a bit of a, I don't say attitude because I don't know, I don't know the kid. But, you know, the kind of way, maybe they just want to make sure, as you say, that he knows, like, this is a new regime. Look, these are the new people in charge. And so, Sometimes as well is people perform better within different situations, right? So, like, some people perform better when they're constantly being praised maybe he's realized and he's spoken to people within the organization. It's like, if you want to get the best out of this guy, you need to like pretty much like challenge him. You need to make sure that he's constantly being challenged to get to the level that you want him to get to. And if that's the case, then it makes a, it makes a lot of sense. And look, if I was Ibra Flus, I would do the same thing for anybody that missed voluntary. I mean, if, if Justin Fields missed it, I'd do the same thing. Be like, Oh, you weren't here. <laughs> Well, this guy was here. He's going to get to play with the ones. Well, you know that these guys eventually are going to be playing with the ones. What you want to do is you want to set down a marker that what's acceptable and what's not. And we don't know if that's the reason why. It could just be that he wants to give somebody else an opportunity to play with the ones and because they're, they have a battle for a couple positions in the defensive backfield. So maybe it's that. And maybe people are reading too much into it, but there is, an oppor- there is a chance there that it is just Eberflus trying to set down that market that, okay, if you're not here, then you don't play. And if you don't pref- – or maybe it was to do with they saw something in practice that he wasn't doing properly and that somebody that was playing on the twos was. And he's like, well, you weren't doing it properly. This guy was, so he gets to play. So it is going to be interesting to see um, about that going forward. Adam, you had, a, you had a point to make on this as well. Yeah, I was just going to say that I, I- – I really like the way Eberflus handled it in the interview where he said that uh, we're getting him up to speed. So while it doesn't flat out say that we would have liked to have him here in, min- in voluntary minicamp, which, you know, like you alluded to, it's voluntold, not volunteered. Um, but 
him not being there, installing a new system, there's going to be some things he's behind on. So whether it's a punishment that he's running with the twos or it truly is him getting up to speed, it's a very vague answer that I think satisfies a lot of needs. Um, you know, he didn't throw under the bus. He didn't make a make a big fuss out of it. He just said, we're getting him up to speed. That could be physical. That could be, you know, uh, schematic. It could be whatever. So I just I appreciate the way he went about it because there are obviously going to be people who take it and run with it. And, oh, why is he running with the twos? But he's also somewhat of a known quantity. So if they're working on the attitude thing right now, you know what you've got as a cornerback. So, yeah, well, I said I you know, never want to see Vildor line up with the ones. I get it in a practice like this, an early practice, because you're going to want to run those young guys out there and let them get a little extra reps because you know that Jalen Johnson, when pressed, can probably you know perform at a much higher level at this point. So it's kind of a twofold thing, but I, I, I do appreciate the way that he handled it going into it because it could have spun way more out of control than it did. And I think part of that was just, again, the honesty of, we're just getting them up to speed. Don't look into it. And at this point, I, I have no reason not to believe them. Yeah, absolutely. I, it's it's one of those that people want to look into everything early on in, in the off season. It's the same thing's going to happen at camp as well. Like if it, and it's what I want to see. If a guy is messing up in a certain practice or in a certain thing, that uh, you go down, somebody else comes up because you want to set that for games because we don't want to get to the point of where we have to complain about the defense not putting in enough effort or the offense not putting in enough effort. That's the minimum required for any sports team. And that's what I want to see. So look, I think it's good for him to do that. When you're a new coach, you kind of need to lay down the ground rules here. And I think that's something that he's done quite well here. Look, I think we all know that at the end of the day, you look at this defensive back, everybody knows Jalen Johnson is going to be one of the starters. But if you can make a, a point to your team, to your rookies coming in, that this is what is accepted and this is what is not, that even when we say like something is voluntary and when it is voluntary, was well, your choice to not show up? Well, then you're going to be behind other players because other players have been doing what, we, what we've been teaching them. Because like, like we said, it's a completely new offense, defense, and special teams. So... Everybody on the roster is starting from scratch. So you need to be you need to be there. And that's my point right there. I don't understand anyone that didn't show up. I, I don't get it. I don't understand why you didn't show up to this. Because one, it's it's your job. And second of all, this is a brand new coaching scene. And they've already shown they, they've sent Mac to the Chargers. They they do what they'll do what they think is right. If if they don't feel you're a good fit within this football team, they don't care who you are. Robert Quinn, Jalen Johnson, Jesus, anybody, and I and I mean anybody, they will decide, you know what, that's that's enough of what, what we think is right for us to do. And and I, I'm I'm fascinated to see exactly what they're what they're gonna be doing with this, but it's the right thing to do. And these these guys need this. Last year we didn't we last year had had the same thing. We had Rocom was the only guy that showed up in the defense. Mm -hmm. Remember you served me right? There's your culture right there within the club. See the same see the same time. Like I totally, totally get what you're saying in terms of you know people should be turning up and, and all that kind of stuff, and that's absolutely valid. But I think I, maybe at the same time the two situations aren't linked. Um maybe, you know, and I said this earlier, you have to we have to stop thinking about the players on the Bears. In a 2021 sense, we have to start thinking of the players on the Bears in 2022. In that sense, that everybody has a clean slate, you know. So why not go out there and put Kendall Wilder at the number one spot and Kyler Gordon at number two? And why not do this? That you know, it, because we have an idea in our heads of what we think the depth chart should look like. Um, doesn't mean to say that Eberflus and the coaches can't try things because they think, well, you know what? I've seen this guy, I know he's raw tools, and the coaching for the, the players was a was a huge detriment to them last year. So um, you know, if you take that aspect of away and 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 apply good coaching practices to these people who clearly have um skills, then you know, who knows what the you know they can they can elevate players. You know, you see it all the time, change of coaches or change of football managers or anything like that. You know, you get a bad player one year, this new guy comes in and somehow gets the best out of him. And all of a sudden, you've got a brand new player on your team that you never really thought of being a huge contributor. You know, almost like a brand new signing, if you like. And who knows? I mean, that, that could be something that happens out of the back of this. Um, so, 
you know, is again is May. So th- there's absolutely nothing wrong with um, Dominique Robinson as the starting defensive end at, uh, at OTAs just now, because why not? You know, get put, put him out there. And I know you can't really evaluate some of these positions uh, without pads, but get him out there and see how they move and see how they look and see what they pick up, see how they interact with their team members. Are they going to elevate others around about them? Or, you know, there's, there's loads and loads of variables that go into this. Um, so I think it's a really interesting time of year, OTAs, just from the sheer fact, especially if it's a brand new coach, um, you know, is, is trying to figure out what you're going to get from different players. Yeah, well, and yeah. Go ahead, Corey. You know what? What I'm thinking of um, listening to you guys is when Justin Fields said in one of his pressers, you know, um, I, I just like some accountability. For example, um, you know, needing to run or or having some kind of accountability for messing up during a game, and that was the first realization for me that. I was like, whoa, that's not happening. You know, like that that seems like such a uh, basic football 101 coaching strategy that I was shocked when I heard Justin Fields say that. And I think that, you know, not as a generalization of all the players that are coming in from 2021, but, you know, maybe it is in in terms of somebody like Jalen Johnson, more of a resting on their laurels kind of thing, you know, and you would think that, especially with a new regime change that you'd, you'd want to show up, put your best foot forward. But I think that um, the players that this regime inherited kind of are coming from a culture of resting on your laurels and just assuming that you have your starting position. And um, I, it's, I think that polls and Eberflus are making it very clear that that is not the kind of football team that they're going to be running. I mean, what was like the, one of the first things that Eberflus said was like, bring your running shoes or, you know, it, it, it's it's clear they want intensity they want guys who love football and they they want effort and i think though that's kind of like a the foundational pieces of their coaching and i think that you know i that's probably what's being shown a little bit in in jalen playing with the twos maybe and like you said maybe it's just something else but i think overall the coaching and the culture on this team is vastly different and thank God for that. I think, you know, if you look at like Muhammad and Gibson, yeah, Muhammad is coming from the same scheme that's going to be put into place and he played twice as many snaps, but Gibson might, you know, I think he has a little bit better of a PFF grade. So, you know, just the fact that, yeah, they might have kind of an overall sense of where they want to see players, but put it to the test. Let let these guys compete for spots. Let's have some actual competition here. You know, that can only be for the better of the entire organization. And it's was has sorely needed for I don't even know how long. And I'm excited to see it. The great, team, the great teams in school right across the board have that are we oh, is, that, is, is, there, is there a demon on the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> it can't be me. I'm in the shed. Um, it, it's, it's, I think that's the most important thing for me is that some that, <laughs> that, famous, that famous sports teams had that competition right across the board. No matter what sport you want to look at, that's what they looked at. In, in this part of the world, some of the big, biggest soccer clubs like Manchester United always had competition in big positions. You look at sports teams now. Even the even the Patriots had different ways of beating you with different players when they were being superior. That's what you need, and that's what I think we'll bring to this party. I'm sick and tired of watching a Bears team where you know every single player at the start of the season will be if they're fit, will play every game as long as they're fit. We need to get away from that. We need to get to a point where it doesn't matter who you are. If you're not performing, there's somebody else behind you and it's next man up. And that's that's the strategy we need to get to. And Tony, I agree with you about, about that maybe and Johnson not turning up to, to OTAs. But my point is even more even what you said, even more reason why you should show up. Just in case he's not the number one guy that he thinks he is. So this is I think what Corey was saying as well. I think it's 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 that kind of yeah, it the hits the hits principle exactly. Yeah, 100%. Look, guys, there's a bunch of you listening to us over on Twitter. Make sure that you head over onto YouTube so you can kind of get your comments in, get your questions as well, because we'll go through a couple of them before kind of we finish up today. But look, it is going to be a – it's interesting as you see this because nobody really knows what to expect. We get these little snippets right now. 
we tend to not get like a lot of information coming in until training camp because we get this because fans are there every single day you're getting to hear who's actually doing what you got to hear a little bit and i mentioned it earlier on the show the video that the bears put out today because you got like little tidbits from coaches and stuff and what they taught on certain players and even they mentioned a couple of things about some of the wide receivers and guys that you really wouldn't have expected anything from like obviously they spoke about mooney but like they actually spoke like for whatever it was 10 or 12 seconds about like simba webster they they spoke about equinemia st brown and like it's good to see the coaches kind of i guess embrace that and at some point fans are going to need to realize that look i know everybody wants to say that you want to kind of put justin fields in the best position possible but when you actually go back and think of it like realistically if justin fields improves this year and if justin fields plays and at a higher level this offense will be at a higher level and you'll see some of these players develop and look better than people are expecting and like kind of ryan paul said in the video you can't fix everything in a year you need to set down your foundation right so what what they tried to do was fix that defense and bring in a bunch of young guys on the offensive line and start battling with each other and it it, it seems good and it seems like at least to a point that the coaching staff seems satisfied with the likes of uh, Tevin Jenkins and Larry Borum, some of those guys that have come in. You see like Nicholas Morrow talking about Kyler Gordon and Jaquan Brisker, and that's really, that's really exciting to see that your top two picks in the draft that there's established players in the defense that are excited about them, and that's definitely a, a positive going forward. And Look, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how we go. Um, look, one of the other um, questions that I wanted to ask here, um, I saw somebody ask this one before. So do we think the Bears are closer to a top three draft pick or closer to the playoffs? So that's an interesting one because the reason why I put this out, I know a lot of people are just going to say, this is obvious, a top three draft pick. Well, let me just say this. When... It's been a very, very long time since the Bears have had a top three draft pick. We've played some pretty bad football in the last year and I've snuck into the playoffs, especially with the amount of teams that get in. I personally don't see the Bears getting either one of them this year or next year. I don't see them being bad enough to get top three because usually there's teams that win like one game <laughs> that end up getting a top three pick. So what are your guys' opinions on this? Do you, which side would you be on? Do you think the Bears are closer to potentially getting into a playoff spot or that they could take a step further back and actually become one of the three worst teams in the league? Playoffs. We're not the, two, we're not the three worst teams in the league. No, no. Playoffs are every team. That's the answer. That's the answer. That was easy. Sure. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next one. Breakout star 2022. That, that topic completely whiffed. Anyway, I thought we were going to talk about it for a little bit longer, but never mind. We'll go. Breakout star 2022. That's just a confidence, Kieran. I'm, I'm going to caveat this with you can't pick Justin Fields. Okay. Because okay. I think that would be too, I think that would be too obvious. But yes, Ron. Yes. So look, there's, you can talk about defense, you can talk about offense, whatever you want, but does anybody have an indication on who you think can be that? I guess just the guy that they'll just get to the next level and it could be it doesn't have to be surprising, right? But somebody that you can be like, oh, they're a good player and may become a great player. Someone that you didn't expect a lot from and then suddenly you see how productive they are. So does anybody have kind of an an option here for a breakout star of 2022 for the Chicago Bears? I think Khalil Herbert could have a good season. I think he may take that big jump from season one to season two. I mean, we're going to be a running football team this season, and, and those guys are all going to get their fair share, I'd imagine, during, during the whole year. So I think Herbert could step up. He, he looked really, really good last year to the point where a lot of people were saying, oh, forget about Montgomery. We have Herbert now. We don't need him. So he... he I mean, he does have that talent. So I think he makes that big jump this year and he will get a chance to make the jump as well. 
So it might be a little bit obvious, but um, I have to go with Darnell Mooney. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I just, I feel like, I wish I could have been on on Sunday. I'm sure because you guys talked about um, all this shit in the national media about just talking shit basically before they can have anything to talk shit about. Um, and you know, I just I feel like Fields and Mooney they're they're the kind of people that block out the noise and just get to work. But you know, you they're hearing stuff. You know, they're they're not blind and deaf. They're obviously going to be hearing all of this chatter and i i feel like they especially when you hear reports coming out like you know they they were at hell's hall until 12 30 in the morning going over film you know i just and especially hearing polls talk about mooney at the combine in such a way that you know i really think that he believes mooney is can be that you know receiver that he was talking about the playmaker you know that the that he's the guy that if everything falls apart on a play, that he's the guy that Fields can look to, to be open and make a play. And I I really, I feel like this is his year. I, you know, there was so much just crap with Allen Robinson and, you know, is Fields the number one? And it, it, there was just so much noise last year. Oh, <laughs> way through the Corey just caught she, out. She's being a third. She's being censored out. Oh, Daphne was not me. She must have pressed the button or somebody came into the room. But I did want to ask a question. So, like, I'll kind of wait for Corey to come back. And she's just coming back into the chat now. And um, I don't know what happened there. What happened there, Corey? I don't know. I keep getting kicked off. I'm getting really pissed off. This is my husband's laptop. So I have to be, like, kind of careful with it. But, if, I mean, like, I'm ready to toss it out the window. Chuck it. I don't Chuck know what it. the hell. Do it. it. Do it. <laughs> no, because then she'll be off the stream. Go. I get another laptop. <laughs> well, but, look, Corey, one of the questions I wanted to ask, because th that was kind of one of my thoughts about it would probably be Mooney, but – for him to be the breakout star, what does that season need to look like? It, it, he needs, well, first of all, I think, you know, Noel was pretty close in terms of, I do think we're going to be seeing a lot of running football, which isn't a bad thing. And I think it's fantastic for a really young, new offensive scheme. But, you know, I if, if Mooney broke a thousand yards again, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, at least a touchdown a game. I I think that and and just the kind of playmaker that you can rely on, you know, just beating those guys downfield, um, you know, just pristine routes, um, having having building that chemistry with fields, you know, you kind of know it when you see it, right? What is going on? Interesting. There you go. That that would be fantastic. Yeah, like it'd be It'd be interesting, and I'll open this up to everybody else. For obviously, there's been so much talk about Darnell Mooney. Some again, I don't want to go too much into the national media because, look, at the end of the day, it's always been the same with the Bears that unless there's a story that really kind of entices them, they don't, they never say anything good about the Bears because the Bears don't win enough for them to say much about it. And they know that what they want to do is kind of stir up a fan base, right? So what does Mooney have to stupid. yeah yeah fans are stupid because they they want everybody to say how great their team is right that's that's normal people hate seeing the negative parts about their team when it comes from guys that don't cover the team right so i guess the the one thing that i'll put out there then is what does mooney have to do this year to get the respect that he deserves Obviously, i don't think it matters one thousand yard season uh, yeah, but 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 why why does it matter? What uh, this is the part. This is my whole point about the national media. Why do we care? Like it doesn't it doesn't matter because they will respect us when we win. But the thing, you know the reason why you're talking about respect from the national media or respect from some Bears fans who are maybe not but, buying in, buying but, into the the Mooney thing. And, the, and that's what and that's what I kind of that's what I kind of mean. I don't really care about these like bloggers or these guys that report on the NFL and then they put like two stories out about the Bears in the entire year. But the thing is, when these stories go out, you see Bears fans that believe all of them. So I guess what will it take for 
him to get to the point where Bears fans like in its entirety just embrace having a player like Darnell Mooney and not just think he's just a fifth round pick that had a good season. He's too small. He's not going to be able to do this. When realistically all he's done since he's come to Chicago is perform and produce really, really good numbers in an offense that was one of the worst in the league. I reckon, and and it's basically just the way that things work. He's gonna ha- he's gonna have statistically at least the same caliber of season as he did last year. Uh, if because if they go back, if they if he has less receiving yards and uh, less yards per catch, and and maybe not so much in the the, the touchdowns, but people are going to say that's a regression. So I mm-hmm. think inevitably you're going to have to look at getting the same round about the same. Uh, number of yards um, this year, if not more. I think okay. part of the reason that Mooney gets, I don't want to say a bad rap, but I think there's such a negative attitude towards him because you think about when we got Allen Robinson and look at the receivers we had before we had Allen Robinson, where we've got Kendall Wright and Dontrell Inman, you know, leading the offense down the field and we're relying on Devin Aroma should do to, you know, Aroma should do something. <laughs> oh, um, <God. laughs> but. You know, we, we get Allen Robinson and, and he comes in and he absolutely elevates the offense. And then, you know, things with the offense start falling apart, as does Allen Robinson. And we've got this shiny new toy in Darnell Mooney, who is just supposed to be a fifth round wide receiver. And then his first year, he kind of balls out and it's, it's like, oh, my God, this guy didn't drop a ball the entire season. You know, he's he looks really good. And then year two, when the offense is absolutely, you know, atrocious and he's still out here making catches, putting up yards and everything else. And I think part of it is people are just kind of so down on the fact that Allen Robinson just completely disappeared and that Darnell Mooney's not Allen Robinson. So when you hear a lot of the talk about, well, he's not a one, um, you know, I think part of that is people are saying not just he's not a one, he's not Allen Robinson. And, you know, that's where I think the scheme's going to matter because, you know, you heard what like Eberflew said today. I love Justin's deep ball and we're going to take some shots downfield. Well, who's who's the guy who's always open downfield that they could never find in the last couple of years? It's Darnell Mooney. So he might not need to be Allen Robinson to be a one. But I think sometimes that thought gets conflated where, you know, you ask, like, what's a successful season? If again, <laughs> I'm going to make you guys so tired of this word, but competency, if that offense looked competent with Darnell Mooney as the top wide receiver in, in that offense and he's putting up numbers, I think that respect's going to come because people are going to realize that an offense can flow through him. You don't need him to be up, be that Guagi guy who catches, you know, every ball, jump ball, this and that. Like, if he's able to do that as the focal point of that offense, I think that respect's going to come. Yeah, I think... You know, the, pro- the problem is, though, sorry, Keaton, just very quickly, one of, one of the problems is that is people... Some fans are, are fucking stupid, right? And it's just this <laughs> materialistic... No, they are, right? It's just this Holy materialistic witch. thing, right? It's, like, it's just the way oh, you well. said it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, well, he's a first-round pick. And he's a fifth round pick, so he must be better. You know, it's like, oh, I bought this sandwich from Aldi's and you brought yours from Marks and Spencer's. Do you know what I mean? Like, yours is clearly better than mine. Fuck off. It's not actually. This sandwich is delightful. You just need to yes, take, take, a bite. take a bite out of the sandwich and you will love it and you will not go back to buying sandwiches that cost five pounds more. That's just how it's going to be. Do you know what I mean? So what I'm trying to get around to here is that people are just tagging him with this fifth round thing. And that's how people work in general. They just they, 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 they look at the, the the money or the the round or the whatever <laughs> team Aldi, and um, <laughs> yeah, it's Aldi, Aldi's awesome. And so yeah. is, so is our that Mooney. was beautiful. Um, that was absolutely beautiful. Very good. All right, so we've had Darnell Mooney. Any other? We've had Noel's given his. Corey's given hers. Anybody have a, a different um, player that Kevin you'd Jen- like to nominate? Kevin Jenkins. Okay, so what well, you're gonna no, say that? Oh, he's still mine. He's still mine. Everyone's still mine. Everyone's, everyone's sleeping on him. Yeah. Uh, everyone, everyone's sleeping on him because everyone, as we said it before, everyone saw this guy as a number one pick, and it looks like he's back at right tackle now, and it looks like there's gonna be a, a real, a real buzz. And if we're gonna be a running football team, we need someone to create holes and push people out the way and. God, this guy looks like he wants to throw people into the stadium, into the stand. He's probably going to throw somebody up where we are sitting way, way back uh, at the Washington Washington football teams. Or as Corey pretty well, what the fuck team? Um, <laughs> what are you playing against? So, look, I, I think I think Devin Jenkins is going to have a big, big season. 
I think he's another one. We, we speak about Mooney having a chip on his shoulder. Even by the interview today, the little bit I heard of it, he has a massive chip on his shoulder. And he's already a bit leaner and a bit a bit meaner, so I'm all for that. A bit leaner? He said he's 24% body fat. That's yeah. like seriously lean. <laughs> I loved him giving a shout out to the Pilates studio he's going to. Yeah. He's going over to Natural Pilates over here in Lake Forest. I've lost 25 pounds. Like, geez, man. If that's yeah. not their marketing slogan, if that's not all over their place right now, yeah. missing a trick. It just says endorsed by Tevin Jenkins everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Tevin Jenkins core. <laughs> oh, oh, thank Tevin. <laughs> yeah. So, Adam, what about yourself? Do you have a, a guy that you'd like to nominate or have they been said? I mean, sticking with an offensive theme, obviously defensively, we've talked about it a few times. I'm really excited to see what Travis Gibson can do. Him and Muhammad together, I think, are, you know, those are the kind of guys that you you take a look at the future where we talk about we've got one foot in the present, one foot in the future. Um, you know, Gibson, Gibson really could be that guy. But offensively, I mean, I'm excited to see what Cole Komet can do um, for all the knocks you hear on the guy. Um, he's He's been a top 15 tight end in an offense that really hasn't done much with tight ends, despite the uh, constant reminder that the offense really flows through tight ends. So never quite got that with the whole Nagy scheme and, and the, the focus on tight ends, but the lack of use. Uh, he didn't have any touchdowns last year. Obviously, he's got a lot to prove still, but you know he's another guy who, when you talk about target share and percentage of offense, he did a lot for that Bears offense last year. Um, he didn't make a lot of noise, but ne neither did the offense. So you can't really hold that against him too much. I'm excited to see what he can do in this system, a system that's going to, you know, potentially use his skills a little bit more, rely a little less on his athleticism or a slight lack thereof and a little bit more on his ability to catch the ball and, you know, move downfield. And I think that's the, the important thing is this offense is really going to focus for the first time in what seems like forever on actually moving downfield and not backwards. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm really interested to see what they do with Cole Komet. And if he takes that next step, obviously tight end being such a hard position to learn for a young guy. He just recently got a ringing endorsement from Greg Olson, too. Um, I mean, is is there a better tight end that you could ask that from? You know, uh, he knows what he's talking about, clearly. That that, tra uh, that trade will haunt me for my forever, entire forever. life. But forever heartbroken <laughs> over Greg yes, Olson. <laughs> I've got the Greg Olson Miami jersey. I've got the Greg Olson Bears jersey. That that yeah. one that one took me down a couple pegs. Dagger. Yeah, that, that one really does suck. And Look, I, uh, we, we kind of have to stick to it on, on the show. I think the breakout player this year is going to be Trenton Gill, punter for the Bears. With that, I'm going to come to our, our last segment of the show. And this uh, is one Kieran, that... Uh, hold, hold on. Uh, you haven't actually asked me who you think my breakout player is going to be. You've uh, said that. Uh, you said you were picking Tevin Jenkins like Ant and that he stole your one. So I just assumed that was what it was. Well, Actually, no stole my first choice. Uh, and then Ant stole, stole your second, choice. so what was the but point? <laughs> luckily, luckily for you, lucky, lucky viewers and listeners, I have a top three. Um, so in at number three for me... It's Trent and Gil. Is, is, <laughs> is, uh, is Jalen Johnson. Uh, and I'll tell you for why. Basically, um, I think that he's been in a situation, as we know, where um, people have been avoiding him, okay? Um, they've been they've been thrown the other end of the field, um, so he's not had the the the, the sort of stats to to kind of uh, you know back up and make him look as impressive as he could be. So I think having Kyler Gordon on the other side of the field is going to help with that. Um, people are going to have to throw on either side now, and there's going to be a threat there. Um, I think you know, which back off the back of all this kind of stuff, you know, sticking him in the twos, you know, I think I think it's a catalyst for him to react in a positive way, if, if that is what Eberflus is trying to do. The guy's obviously a top talent, got all the skills, and I, I, I think this could be a statistical breakout season for Jalen Johnson, and we could see him cement. I mean, we're talking about Kyler Gordon, and Kyler Gordon is, uh, looks really good, and he's a, a much more uh, athletic version of Jalen Johnson. But I think Jalen Johnson is saying to himself right now, hold on a second, don't forget I'm here. And um, and I think we're going to have a good season from him as well. Fair enough. Fair now enough. you can move on. Now I can move on to <laughs> to our last bit. I've been waiting. I've been waiting for this. This is one of my favorites. So we're gonna again go away from just the Bears talk. We're gonna talk about the best sports movie of all time. 
and you have to make kind of your I guess determination make make people believe that your movie is the best. Let's hope not nobody picks the same one as each other. Look, when I mentioned this, Adam, you were the first but person to to talk about this. So I'm gonna let you go first. Who what is your best sports movie of all time? Well, I know for a fact that no one's gonna pick mine because all of my favorite <laughs> movies are dumb as shit. So <laughs> uh, we'll just lead with that. Um I will say that in terms of like well-renowned sports movies, my favorite probably sports movie is Major League, the baseball movie. Um, I, I grew up in a you know baseball household, and that that one was always on repeat. My brother always watching it. Um, but my favorite sports movie is actually from the creators of South Park. It's basketball. Oh, <laughs> I, love, I, love it. I was going to say that. <laughs> so so when when we were kids and that came out, I wasn't supposed to be watching it, but my parents worked nights. <laughs> So luckily, I was able to uh, to watch it whenever I wanted uh, because my brother had a copy, and we would actually set up a basketball court around our house in our you know bedroom with the little tiny door hoop and everything. So that one always holds a special place with me. It taught me a lot of things I shouldn't have learned at that age, um, but I give it a lot of credit for uh, getting me where I am in terms of uh, some of my bravery and saying the things I do. So I love that movie. It's it's dumb. It's stupid. It's all sorts of fun. Um, but you know, combines a couple of great sports and it's a, it's a good laugh. Yeah. <laughs> very, very good. Um, Corey, I'm going to come to you next. What is your best sports movie? So, uh, I mean, how can you pick just one there? There's too many. Hard part. I narrowed it down to a couple and neither of them are about football, but the first, first one is miracle. <laughs> great movie um i don't okay i get like super emotional over the olympics i like will just like cry randomly like any olympics winter summer it's just you know i think that i all of the effort like two years or like these people's entire lives they put towards this one single event and it's just it's very moving for me so miracle is i just i love that movie and it's it makes me cry every time. Um, and then I, I really love A League of Their Own. You know, right. it's just again sentimental and hilarious, and I don't know, women in sports. I'm always, always supporting that. So that, that was your two. Those are my two. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you don't seem yeah. very. Rest. No, I wasn't sure how many you had because you said I have a couple, and I'm like, oh, is there more? <laughs> <laughs> I probably could keep going, but I'll I'll narrow it down to those two classics. I could watch them over and over and over again, and I I would love them. All right, Tony, I'm gonna go to you next. What's your number one? Uh, okay, so I have a couple uh, because again, I can't choose, so I'm just gonna put a couple out there and whatever. Um, so the first one is because it's a football show is Remember the Titans. Uh, Fuck you, Tony. <laughs> That's what Whatever. you get for taking oh, thank you. <laughs> Fuck's sake, by the way. <laughs> I, see, my reaction was, oh, God, Dan, why did you do that? He's like, Fuck you, Tony. <laughs> But anyway, as I was saying, remember the Titans is such a move in the film, you know. So um, <laughs> I, I get I get choked up every time I watch it, man. Um, although for some reason, my wife will tell you as I'm getting older, I cry at everything. I don't know what's going on with me right now. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> so yeah, remember the remember the Titans is up there. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, that was good. Um, Rocky is the other one. Uh, you Fuck can pick... you, Tony. Just... <laughs> <laughs> right? Seriously, there's just no need for that. I'm going home. I sham home. I'm leaving. <laughs> I knew it. I knew someone was going to come. I knew it. But anyway, go on. I'm not going to say any more. I mean, I mean, good I pick, Tony. Well done. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Is that it? All right, Ak. And oh, you're next. <laughs> Which Rocky did you pick? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from number oh, five. That's that's so, so I, I broke it down to when I was a young 
young lad, and then what I thought was the best movie. So when I was a young lad, it was the Mighty Ducks. Come on, we don't need your life story. Just get on with it. Right. <laughs> that won't fit in a t-shirt. But I was a young lad. You can start singing in a minute. <laughs> uh, the Mighty Ducks, because it was the only thing that was ever on RTE. So you used to always come on all the time. Um, so it was... It was Listen, I shit you not, and I was honestly Class, going to say the Mighty Ducks in my you're top film. You're the one that I was going to watch <laughs> and then the other one, uh, I got a few. I got a few. I'm going to go with Moneyball. Um, oh, thank God. Just because just I watched it four or five times and thought it was pretty decent. So I'm going to go with those two. All right, now, other than Rocky, you want to Fucking Rocky, come on. <laughs> Rocky. <laughs> And actually, Adam to- uh, stole my uh, honourable mention, which was Major League. I used to love watching that film when I was younger. Um, I-, I can't say Rocky now. I actually love, and not just because it's football, it's any given Sunday. I, I-, I actually really enjoyed that film. And uh, look, how can- now, like a film that has Pacino and Dick Buckus and Jim Brown and fucking on and on. But I enjoyed that. Now, it would have been better if they had actual NFL team names. But, you know. But yeah, no. Well, Rocky is the best sports film ever. But Tony just fucking ruined that. Yeah, Fuck you, though. No. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, there's there's been some good ones in in the comments. There's been the Water Boy, uh, the Sandla, uh, North Dallas Forty. Uh, one of the things I'm so glad nobody said this one, and it's not really like one of the major uh, sports. I don't know if. Am I kind of cutting out a little bit? You're good. I'm no, not I'm sure. good. Oh, yeah. yes. Oh, yes, you are, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, More than a little bit. I'm cutting out a lot, actually. Just a bit. <laughs> can someone Do you have any other sports movies to talk about while he's gone? Can, can, some, can someone explain to me North Dallas 40? I've never seen it. Oh, that's I've I, seen that pop and I've never even heard of it. I've never heard of it either. No. Well, so, oh, clearly we oh, need a, a movie night when Agent, Agent Mole, Friday go, Night Lights. Movie night. What about Dodgeball? Dodgeball is a classic. That's Dodgeball. Friday Night Lights, the TV series. Great lines in that. You can dodge a spanner, you can dodge a ball. <laughs> a, a wrench. <laughs> dodge a wrench, yeah. Dodge, dodge a, a wrench and dodge a ball. Oh, class. <laughs> Oh, oh, Wildcat, jeez, that was an old one. It was a white, see white that, the Goldie Hawn one. Yeah. Which one is that, Freddie? My my son recently got into uh, Sandlot, and every once in a while he'll go, Wendy Peppercorn, <laughs> and he's not even five yet. And I'm like, <laughs> calm that down. <laughs> smart kid, smart kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, 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 de- you definitely cut out there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're cutting out a bit, Kieran. Just a little. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's fine. It's fine. Somebody <laughs> somebody took mine here anyway, so I don't care. It was dodgeball. So uh. Uh. yeah, I I had it all like put up here. I was like, we actually talked about it for you while you were off the uh, screen there. <laughs> Tony gave a few quotes. <laughs> I stole another one. <laughs> very, very good. Anyway, that was a that was good. Look, it was. I don't know why uh, my internet decided to completely cut out. So there we go. <laughs> it is. It is what it is. This is what happens. But look, it was good to be able to talk about some of this kind of random stuff as well. Um, look, it's always good to be able to talk Bears football as well. Um, we're going to be talking um some kind of college football over the next couple of weeks as well we're gonna have a couple of guests on for you guys to listen to um so make sure that you're following us over on twitter for all the latest um that's where we put up all the new kind of episodes so make sure that you're following there make sure you like the video make sure that you do subscribe we've had some really good um comments over the last couple of days about some of the videos so if you haven't checked out the last two episodes we did kind of an analysis of the bears roster so we did both offense and defense and make sure you go and check that out make sure that you subscribe and yeah look all we can say when we end the show is fuck you tony (laughs) (laughs) fuck you tony